we had a particular set of skills, much like Liam Neeson, right? Okay, that, that was supposed to be funny. Guys, I'm not, I, I, I try to make this a little bit more lighthearted than sometimes it tends to be. So anyway, uh, we went to the legislature in the summer of 2012. We volunteered to do that. And, and in November of 2012, they gave the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics jurisdiction to investigate human trafficking. Uh, we have a division uh, within the Bureau, and, and basically I'm the supervisor. I got six agents in Oklahoma City. One starting in Tulsa, uh, the middle of next month. So we'll, we're starting to kind of develop up there, and we cover the entire state. We could not do this, none of it, any of it, by ourselves. Our friends, our non-governmental organizations that we partner with, our shelters, our service providers, they're the ones engaged in the in the aftercare. And I'll tell you why I call it aftercare. When I was a dope cop. Uh, it's hard for you to understand, maybe, but I buy a kilo of cocaine. I took that kilo of cocaine. I submitted it to property. I filled out some paperwork. I left it laying there. A year later, we went to court, and I went back to property, and I signed my life away, and they gave it back to me, and I showed it to the judge and the jury. But what is the commodity in human trafficking? You can, you can participate. It's okay. People. People. I can't leave them on a shelf in the property room for six months, can I? No, they would get hungry, right? They need, he they need help. They need all kinds of help. And that's where our brothers and sisters in the non-governmentals come in. And we appreciate them so much. So I'm going to lay a foundation about what human trafficking is in Oklahoma. When I speak to uh, groups, especially university groups, I get a lot of questions about other countries. And folks, these folks up here can answer those questions. So, so my jurisdiction is the state of Oklahoma. What's going on right here, okay? So let's look at a couple things real quick. I don't have a lot of time, but how many of you think that that is human trafficking? And just for, uh, so you'll kind of be more aware, that's a young girl stuffed in the dashboard of a car. That's a young girl stuffed in the dashboard of a car. Let me see a show of hands. How many think that's human trafficking? Good number of you. How many think it is not human trafficking? One. Thank you, ma'am. You and me. Oh, there you go. How many of you don't know? Yeah. You've seen this before, Lori. That's not fair. <laughs> the answer is I don't know. When we get a lead, when we get a picture, when we get a phone call, when we get a hotline call, we don't know whether that subject that they're talking about is human trafficking. We have to do something really fancy called an investigation. An investigation is a sophisticated way to say we ask questions. We ask questions. What we found out about this picture is, first of all, we're trained investigators. We can tell you that that picture was taken July 5th of 2001. Because <laughs> we went to school and we're smart, right? But when we get to asking questions about that, what we found out was that was not human trafficking. That is human smuggling. And although human smuggling is against the law, she was not a victim of a crime. She was a participant in a crime, right? She paid to be there. She was in a consensual contractual agreement to get smuggled from point A to point B across probably an international border. Does that make sense to everybody? That is the biggest misconception we have in the United States about human trafficking, is that people that are smuggled into the country are somehow human trafficking victims. Now, we're going to get to the definition right now, what human trafficking is. But keep in mind that if she gets to where she's going and she doesn't have a plan, she doesn't have a support structure, she doesn't have anything uh, to fall back on, is she then vulnerable? Yeah, you could say, yeah, it's okay, let's participate, it's all right. Uh, yeah, she's vulnerable. So let's look at this definition. Human trafficking is defined by the International Association of Human Trafficking Investigators, and why that's important is that's what we modeled our state statute after. We had to make it illegal in Oklahoma in November of 2012, right? Exploitation. How many of y'all have never been exploited? Hi, how you doing? Good to see you, beautiful Dream Society is here. Give it up for them. How many of y'all have never been exploited? 
Uh, you thought about it for just a little bit, but sir, you've been exploited. Everybody's been exploited, right? Summer times in my house are dangerous. Yeah, my wife is a teacher. And she's home all thinking of devious ways to spend a lot of money. And this summer she got hired a contractor to remodel the bathroom. I've been exploited, my friends. <laughs> when I saw that bid, I said, what? For a bathroom? What, are we going to live in there? My point is, guys, we're all exploitable. But some of us are exploitable by, and I put those in yellow because those are elements of a crime that we have to prove. Force, fraud, or coercion. Force, fraud, or coercion. Do we understand those terms? Let's see. What's your name? Sam? Sam, Sam Desprez? Dupre. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I've been here way too long in Oklahoma. <laughs> Sam Desprez. <laughs> Sam, I have a, 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 and don't take this personal, but I have a, a white Chrysler out in the parking lot. Okay. If you don't go wash my car right now, I'm going to smack you in your head. Great. Yeah, <laughs> Sam, Sam ain't worried about it. Sam looks at me and goes, yeah, whatever, old man. Just, Sit down and shut up. <laughs> right? Is that force? Is it the threat of violence? Or violence? Yeah, that's force, guys. We understand that. Those of us with kids understand that, especially. <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's a large part of our society is fear. Okay, what about fraud? Um, you, ma'am, Bryn. Yes. I have a white Chrysler 300 out there. If you will wash my car, I'll give you $40,000. Oh. Would you think about it? Except for the fact that Bryn wasn't listening to the part I said where I work for the state of Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> but see how easy, guys? Fraud is the promise of something that's never going to happen. Fraud is the promise of something that's never going to happen. Some of you went, well, that was silly, Bryn. But it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what she thought. Student loans. Student loans. <laughs> exactly. And Bryn, if I had $40,000, I'd let you have it for washing my car. You're welcome. <laughs> I can make that promise because there's very ever little possibility I'm ever going to have $40,000, right? <laughs> Force and fraud. Mm. Stand up. I'm sorry. What's your name? Tierney. Tierney. Tierney was really trying hard not to make eye contact with me. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. Sit, down. Okay. Sit down. I would never talk to Tierney that way. But what did I just do? What did I say? Did I say please? Did I say thank you? Did I say would you mind helping me make a demonstration to this audience? Did my tone of voice change? Let's talk about authority. Do I have any authority over tyranny? Well, I'm wearing this, and I'm holding the clicker. <laughs> Does that give me any authority? Might give me perceived authority, right? Perceived authority? Is perception reality sometimes? Am I a man? No, please answer yes. <laughs> yeah. Is she a young lady? And I'm older than she is? Does that give me perceived authority? Guys? It doesn't matter what you thought coercion was. It matters what tyranny thought coercion was. And I would argue to a judge and a jury all day long that she was coerced into standing up. Now, I have to have her stand up and say, I was coerced into standing up. Make sense? It doesn't matter what you consider coercion. It matters what the victim considered coercion. Do we get that? So it's exploitation by force, fraud, or coercion of vulnerable people. We're all vulnerable. Everybody's vulnerable. If you don't think you're vulnerable, just wait a minute. Right? You, we're all vulnerable at certain points in our life. When we lose our support structure, when we move away from home, when we change jobs, when we move to another town or another state, when we uh, get married, when we get divorced, when we change relationships, there's a million times in our life that we're vulnerable. Four, forced labor. What comes to mind when you think of forced labor? No literature majors? Any lit majors? The Grapes of Wrath? Remember, anybody read it? No, not anymore. 
You read it. Is that forced labor? Through fraud, most likely. We're going to hire 500 workers. 5,000 workers show up and we really only hire 100 for just enough for them to starve. Right? Does that make sense? Forced labor. We'll look at some of that. Domestic servitude. How many of y'all have domestic servants? No? I had one. You have one? My boyfriend. Your boyfriend. <laughs> Outstanding. I had a domestic servant, but she went to college. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I found out every load of dishes she washed was another semester hour of tuition. <laughs> right? Domestic servitude, generally, when we're in Oklahoma, we're talking about mail order brides. Right? That doesn't, and it's not in the mail anymore. It's on the internet. By the way, older people in the room, if you want to hack off your kids, call it the internet. <laughs> right? Domestic servitude. Or, and lastly, commercial sex. Now, guys, let's not get confused about the difference between survival sex and commercial sex. We're all adults. We're going to talk about sex. Right? Commercial sex is very simply defined as a third party has to profit. A third party profits. A third party keeps the money, for lack of a better word. A third party profits. We have young ladies and young men engaged in prostitution in the state of Oklahoma. They are not being forced, fraud, or coerced. They keep their own money. It's a lifestyle. It's a life choice. It happens to be against the law, right? But they are not victims of human trafficking. And I'm going to say this once. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear what I'm saying. All prostituted women are victims. Amen? Some Baptists in the room. Is there a Baptist here? Thank you. But not all prostituted women are victims of human trafficking. There's a difference. We have to prove forced fraud or coercion for commercial sex, meaning a third party's got a profit. Does that make sense? However, in my my unit, my guys, my investigators, my guys and gals, we go looking for victims of human trafficking primarily in the commercial sex market because that is the majority of human trafficking in Oklahoma. And very simply, we're going to encounter this prostituted woman. We're going to give her an opportunity to tell us about forced fraud or coercion. We're going to encounter her pimp or trafficker, and we're going to make every effort we can for him unknowingly to tell us about forced fraud or coercion. We're going to do a technical investigation to relieve her of the responsibility of testifying. And we can do that very mostly pretty simply. I don't have it with me. What, how lame am I? Uh, because we all carry computers. We all carry computers now, right? And generally, he's going to have evidence of commercial sex operations on his computer, on his phone. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So, forced fraud or coercion of vulnerable people for forced labor, domestic servitude, or commercial sex. Now, commercial sex includes adults and minors. And we very carefully wrote that statute in Oklahoma. Because what's the age of consent for intercourse in the state of Oklahoma? 16. What's the age of consent for commercial sex in Oklahoma? 18. Yes, it's illegal, but you have to be 18 to consent to an illegal activity. If you are under the age of 18, involved in commercial sex, by statute, you are a victim of human trafficking. That's our bread and butter. That's who we're looking for, right? That is all... That, that, that's a good day at the office, right? Whether she wants to claim victim status or not does not matter. She's going to services. She cannot consent to that activity. And if we can get a guy who's directing that activity, oh, the sun has shone on us that day, and we can put him in jail. Because believe it, guys, these are predators. These are predators. They're not in it to look cool. They're not in it to be Huggy Bear from Starsky and Hutch. Remember Huggy Bear? Nobody. Okay, one lady in the back. Thank you very much. So when we say domestic minor sex trafficking, in Oklahoma what we're talking about is those girls engage in commercial sex under 18. 
We have a tremendous problem in the state of Oklahoma with runaways engaged in survival sex. They're, they're sleeping with someone for a house. They're sleeping with someone for transportation or food or just basic emotional needs. But they are not human trafficking victims unless a third party is profiting from that exploitation. Everybody got the definition because these folks are going to talk about a lot of really cool stuff today. But if you don't have that foundation, that house is just going to teeter and you're not going to understand what it is you're hearing. Amen? Amen. All right. So sex trafficking can take many forms, and we've seen examples in Oklahoma from very small-scale incidents to organized operations. Most of the sex traffickers in Oklahoma, the majority of the sex traffickers in Oklahoma are what we call gorilla pimps, right? They start out as a boyfriend, and then that boyfriend-girlfriend relationship goes horribly wrong. They're very minor criminal-type guys. They're thugs. They're, they're predators. They're too lazy to get a job, so they get a girl who supports herself and him at the same time. And she supports him in a motel room or on Robinson Street, right? It is not a sophisticated crime. The psychology, which I, I hope you hear from Dr. Basie, the psychology is extremely sophisticated, but the crime itself is not sophisticated. And clear at the other end of that spectrum, we have uh, what we call uh, the Hispanic brothel model. Those are traditional organized crime groups. We got another one the other day. I, I, forgot, I forgot to tell you all ago. We got another one the other day. These girls are generally from Guatemala. They're brought up through Houston. Uh, they're put on a circuit. Uh, that circuit is run by uh, Mexican drug cartels because guys, believe it or not, the drug cartels are in the human trafficking business. Drug traffickers and human traffickers are the same people. They changed commodities. They just changed commodities. That's all they did, right? So, and, and guys, please, I'm going to say this as a dope cop, former dope cop. If, if you are Hispanic and you're selling drugs, it doesn't make you a cartel member, all right? If I hear one more time, oh, it must be the Mexican mafia, oh, my God, that's a prison gang. It doesn't exist on the outside, okay? So just chill with that. I, I, it doesn't know. <laughs> Sex trafficking in Oklahoma, the vast majority, and Dr. Basie and her crew are going to talk about Robinson Street. I, I, I don't mean to offend uh, anybody, and, I, and I'm, I may be a little bit biased here, but, but really, guys, the girls that are working outside, the girls that are working on Robinson, the girls that are working in truck stops, uh, the, those girls are at the end of that rope. They are at the end of that rope. That is the most dangerous environment they could possibly be in. They have to deal with their pimp, other pimps, Johns, the customer, just general street crime, right? Because that's not the best neighborhood in the world. God bless you guys for being there. Uh, they have to deal with truck drivers and trucks and exposure to huge risks in those arenas because they get in that truck at that truck stop, they can be gone in a second and out of state, gone, all right? Although I will say this, and, and at the risk of uh, someone on the internets hearing this and getting mad, I-35, I-40, and I-44 have nothing to do with human trafficking. They're highways. Every state in the U.S. has them, right? That's why they're called interstates. <laughs> I know that boggles you. I know it blows your mind. It's like, oh, my God. They connect states. Oklahoma happens to be in the middle of the country, so we're the crossroads to everything. That's what, but everywhere you go claims to be the crossroads of something, right? Or the home of someone. My point is, guys, it happens at every truck stop in the United States. It happens at... At almost every hotel in the United States. We, we don't get to claim any special status because of I-40 and I-35, right? Arizona claims it, Arkansas, claim, well, Arkansas, whatever. Uh, <laughs> all right. But here's where it's at today, guys. I love, I, 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 if I could spend the rest of my life 
in or around college campuses. I just, that, that, that is, I love this atmosphere because you guys are just out there uh, and have run right past me. You were talking about the Twitter feed, and I just got so excited. We're Twitter feeding. I don't even know exactly what that is, but, but I'm sure we'll, but there's some people doing it here that are Twitter feeding, and I think that is so incredibly cool. Your generation has, a, has an advantage that my generation did not have. It's called instant communication. It's called instant knowing everything that you need to know. I used to worry about something all day, and then I would go home and ask Dad, and Dad would say, look it up. I bought you the World Book Encyclopedias. And I said, but Dad, that was in 1972. And he said, I don't, it's still in there. Right? But that advantage that your generation enjoys also comes at great risk. It is also can be dangerous. It can also be misused. Because on the Internet is where we're selling our people now. And this is an outfit called Backpage. Anybody been on Craigslist? I love Craigslist. I buy guitars on Craigslist. I got more guitars than lessons. <laughs> right? Backpage will start out as legitimate, and there's still some legitimate. You can actually buy a refrigerator on there, but I wouldn't, probably. <laughs> right? But Backpage has an escort sen uh, section, and that's where these girls are advertising. We spend every single day that we're available to the Internet uh, looking at Backpage. And we are looking at these pictures, and we're looking at these words. We're looking at them very specifically uh, because we're looking for, first of all, those girls who are pimp controlled and those girls who are under 18. So we're looking at these pictures. We're copying these pictures onto Google image search, right, to see where they originated. Uh, we're looking at, we, we're trained investigators. We could tell you, what can you tell me about this picture right here? Anybody? There's no wrong answers. That's wrong. It's, it's in a home, exactly. It's not in a motel, is it? Somebody else took it. Unless she's sophisticated, got a tripod, and I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. I didn't, I don't get that. But, but when I'm not trying to be funny, everybody laughs. When I'm trying to be funny, everybody stares at me like I'm an alien. Amen. I know, Sonia, thank you. <laughs> My point is, guys, we're looking at that picture. We're looking for girls with wigs. We're looking for girls with specific tattoos. We call it branding, property of payroll. If it says property of payroll, payroll is a pimp in Tulsa. I'll name him, right, because he's a turd. <laughs> he is. I'm sorry. I'm entitled to my opinion. I hope he sues me. I'd like to see him in court. My, my point... <laughs> I may be a big mouth, but you're a pimp. <laughs> so my point is, guys, we're looking for language on here. We're looking at these numbers. Uh, we're looking for numbers in common. We're looking for girls who are trying to appear other than they really are. And it's incredibly hard. Most of you guys uh, are, are young. But as you get older, you will find that it's very hard to judge someone's age. Here's an example. When I saw that picture on Backpage, I about fell out of my chair. Oh, my gosh. Guys, then I did some research. I copied that picture. She's 20 years old. She's an adult film star from uh, Florida. But that brought me to another question. Why would somebody in Oklahoma be using her picture? Because they don't want anybody to see what they really are. They don't want them to see that because they look like me. Or they don't want them to see that because they're underage. Or they don't want them to see that because they have some sort of distinctive tattoo, property of payroll. Do you understand what I'm saying? So my guys spend a whole lot of time. Now, somebody asked me one time, and, and I thought about it really hard, why don't you just shut down Backpage? Well, there's about a half dozen of these sites that we use regularly. We could. Our legislature is awesome. They'll do pretty much anything we need. But if we shut down Backpage, where are they going? How, how long do you think it's going to take an old man like me to figure that out? Uh, longer than we got, right? We know how to subpoena them. We know how to get information from them. We know how to game their system, right? And we're going to use that to our advantage. So labor trafficking, 
really what we see are nail salons, massage parlors, door-to-door -door sales, agriculture and industrial laborers, uh, nail salons, especially Asian nail salons, right? Uh, those girls are here under what we call debt bondage. They owe uh, $10,000 to their employer for getting them here. Right? Are they, and they have to pay for their booth, they have to pay for their supplies. How long is it going to take them? And they get 5% of the door, maybe, or they may just work for tips. How long is it going to take them to pay back that debt? Forever. They're not going to pay it back, right? The problem is, guys, when we approach them and talk to them, do they consider themselves victims? We're trying to force our cultural uh, uh, standards onto their culture. I work six days a week. I have a place to live. I have a job. I have a roof. I don't, I'm not responsible for anybody but me. I'm not a victim. Get away from me. Right? Do you see what I'm saying? In, by statute, I would argue that they are victims of human trafficking. But in reality, they're not going to claim that status. So we're working, trying to find solutions to that kind of thing. Door-to-door -door sales. Folks, I want to just, uh, oh, please. If it's an 18, 19-year-old comes to your door selling magazines, they're just selling magazines, right? Don't chase them down the street, accuse them of being <laughs> victims of human trafficking, and, and tackle them, and then call me and say, what do I do with them now? <laughs> that happened. In Sand Springs, Oklahoma. I got one. What do I do with them? Well, get off of them. Apologize to them. Yeah. Buy a subscription to Better Homes and Gardens. <laughs> but do they, are they vulnerable? Are they vulnerable? We have seen that as a recruiting place. We have seen in Chickasha, Oklahoma, young girl... They're always over 18 because you can't take a juvenile out of state, right? But they're over 18. She's working for this company. Uh, she doesn't make her quota. Her sales manager is an old veteran of 23, right? And he says, sweetie, don't worry about your quota. You stay in the hotel with me tomorrow. We'll take care of it. She became vulnerable. Now, that's not commercial sex yet, right? But she's being exploited. And then she became, I'm sorry, this is uncomfortable. She became the reward for the guys that did make their quota. Is that commercial? Yeah. We didn't say it had to be cash, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Now she was a victim of human trafficking. Fortunately, she got out of that hotel, got across the street to another hotel, and we got to her. We got to her. Does that make sense? All right, I got to move along. So things we look at. Do they have freedom of movement? Can they, they just leave? I have a job. Uh, I, I, well, I can't actually just leave because they tied this retirement thing to it, and I actually have to show up every now and then. But, but if everybody in here that has a job, can you just quit? Yeah, if you really, if things were bad, you could just quit. What if you were in a position where you couldn't just quit? You had nowhere to go. You had nothing else to do. What about your uh, living and working in the same place, owing a debt to your employer? Uh, here's a huge one. Control over immigration documents. Right? I lose my driver's license today. I lose my wallet today. No big deal. There's no money in it. But, sorry, I owe you $40,000. But, but I lose it. I can go uh, still without any kind of paperwork. I could go get in my car drive to Texas. Not sure why, but I could drive to Texas, right? It's like a foreign country, sort of. <laughs> Texas, right? Uh, but, but I get stopped by the Texas Highway Patrol, and he says, where's your identification? I said, I lost it. Uh, I give him my name and my birthday, and he can run me through the computer. He says, yeah, okay, he's got a driver's license. I'll, don't do that anymore, and then go on about my business. But what if I'm here on a visa? I have one piece of identification. What if I just have that ID card? What if in my country, wherever I'm from, that is everything I am. That is who I am. That's how, if I get stopped and I don't have that, I got big problems, right? So if I'm a, a, a shady employer and I take those documents from you, I control you. you. You have nowhere to go. Make sense? So that's what we see. And then lastly, uh, trauma, fatigue, or injuries. I'm about done. I'm out of time. But I want to talk about high-risk victims for just a second. 
Remember I talked about the internet and, and, the, uh, and the Twitter and the tweeter and the MySpace and the your face and the their face? It takes fewer muscles to smile. <laughs> My point is, guys, uh, those guys, those predators, uh, I'm not saying that they're reading that stuff and they're white vans driving around snatching kids out of yards. I had a lady in southeast Oklahoma say, uh, uh, they're snatching the kids out of the yards and selling them into human trafficking. I said, oh, my God, how many kids have you got gone? How many kids are missing? And she said, well, none. And I said, well, they're not very good then, are they? <laughs> At it. I'm not making light of that, but if you read the stories about children who are snatched, generally it's going to be somebody they know. It's somebody in their life, and it's generally some kind of sex crime, right? Human traffickers, human traffickers are much more subtle in their approach than that. All it takes is some girl on faith, or, 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 or uh, hang on, I just totally went blank. Facebook, I love Facebook, love Facebook. I can look up my old high school roommates and stuff, and, or, or uh, friends, you know, and laugh at them. They're old, they're bald, they're fat, you know, I go, ha, 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 ha. And they're, they're doing the same thing to me, so it's okay. My point is, how many of y'all have posted the drama on the Facebook? My parents hate me. Nobody loves me. I, I don't have any. I don't got nobody. You know the old song? Those guys are looking at that. And, but they're not looking at you, obviously, because you know everybody you're friends with on Facebook, right? Right? Huh. Let me, let me tell you. How many of y'all have more than 500 friends on Facebook? Yeah. You know 500 people, buddy? Do you really? How many... If you got a flat tire after you leave here today, how many of them will come change it for you? Hundred? Dang. Can you call them right quick and have them come put some tires on my Chrysler? <laughs> Guys, you don't really know 500 people, do you? That well? You, let me tell you, if I tell you a secret, uh, will you not tell anybody? I know we're broadcasting, but they'll forget by the end of the day. We have uh, uh, some friends that have artificial, fake, totally made-up Facebook accounts. Okay, it's us. In case you hadn't figured that out. We have one Facebook account of a person who does not exist. That person has never existed, will never exist. We have 700 friends on that Facebook account. 700 of you have friended someone who doesn't exist. Some of you who are our friends on Facebook are pimps. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it, how that works out? We sent them friend requests. They said, sure. I like the look of the top of your head. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? It makes you vulnerable. Juveniles with multiple runaway events are vulnerable. They're running to something or they're running from something, but they're running, right? So we're working on a database to get those folks identified and actually get some services to them. Juveniles with a few social anchors. I bring up the whole Facebook thing because, guys, you can be seemingly socially successful today and not know anybody. You can be seemingly socially successful. Say that three times real fast. Seemingly socially successful and really not interact with people. Right? Does that make you vulnerable? Does that make you lonely? Can you have a thousand friends on Facebook and be lonely? No, I'm the only one <laughs> who can, gets tired of listening to that. Uh, and then sometimes we've got those kids out there. They have separated themselves from their social structure. They have separated themselves from their support structure. And the only way they know to survive is uh, th through uh, uh, sexual activity. And, and they have taken that, that first step. They have taken that first step. They've already violated what they thought they would never violate, and now it's just a simple little shove from some guy uh, to get them the rest of the way there. I am way out of time. That's me. That's you. That's me. That's you. That's me. That's you. That's me. That's you. That's our hotline number. Uh, it's 24. What's you just got that? <laughs> Whitney just got it. I'm so proud. Whitney, you've seen that like 60 times, right? My. Every time. 
My point is, guys, that's, that's our hotline number. It's 24-7. I have just not even scratched the service surface uh, of this deal. But you have a room full of experts here who would just love to explain to you what you can do to help. Uh, Google Oklahoma Beer Narcotics on our website. Uh, there's a human trafficking link. There's a lot of uh, frequently asked questions on there. There's a lot of links to non-governmentals that need your help. Uh, th there's always job opportunities at OBN off and on. Uh, we are a state agency. We, we are uh, underfunded unbelievably. Uh, uh, so, you know, just like everybody else. But uh, we appreciate so much you just being here. You have taken that first step in helping. The first step in helping is to get up out of your chair get yourself in a different chair uh, where you can hear idiots like me uh, and then real experts like these here. Are there any questions at all before they hook me off the stage? I did so good that nobody has any questions. God bless you guys. Thank you very much.